Hey Gino, I'm so glad we could break early for lunch and sit here in the park. Some of those idiots over there won't even sit down and eat at lunchtime what's becoming of the skilled construction trade these days. It's not at all like it was when you and all the other dinosaurs worked construction, huh, Gino? Listen, kid, you were upsetting my lunch already. Maybe working through lunch is not a bad idea. Let's just enjoy the time away from the job site, shall we? Pass me a drink, will you please? Ha, ah, that's better. Now go ahead and ask me those questions, and tell me what you saw at your first union meeting at Local 353. I don't want you to bother me with questions on the job where you could get a roll of wire dropped on your fuzzy little head, or trip on a pile of 2 by 4s Gee kid, this is a noisy power. I wish those guys would stop and have some lunch. Okay Gino, I decided to go to the union meeting and watch some guys get upgraded from low-rise residential house wiremen to high-rise residential wiremen. Are any of those guys going to get jobs in high-rise residential kid? Some will, but I think it's just a payoff for some of the guys in low-rise that do what is politically correct and keep their mouths shut. So what, Kit? What did you see? Was the Perry Speranza there? Yes, he was, Gino. He was sitting close to me. He tried to talk on the microphone and identify errors and omissions from the minutes. The guy they call the recording secretary wouldn't change anything and when the Perry Speranza tried to talk they shut off his microphone and the chairman Jeff Irons would talk in his clear loud voice and say Brother Speranza Brother Speranza Brother Speranza Brother Speranza Hey that's what the other chairman with a loud voice would say every time he had needed to stall for time and think of a way to find him out of order. Yeah, well they didn't agree with the Paris Speranza's omissions and the Jeff Irons said in his nice loud voice that the minutes were George's minutes and he writes them up how he wants to. He said the I.O. agreed that they were George's minutes and that he was their favorite recording secretary and that they allowed the George Smith to record minutes whenever it was an important meeting that needed the minutes recorded the way they liked. The George Smith likes to dance around and act a clown when someone is disagreeing with him. He's not a bad dancer you know Gino, but isn't that disrespectful Gino? It sure is kid. I don't care how good a dancer he is. The Perry Speranza tried to make a motion to change the regular order of business so that the committee reports would go after the good of the union. I heard him saying that he didn't understand why so many appointed committee chairpersons could have as much time as they wanted to speak and yet the part where members got their say was held to the very end even after all those time-wasting ticket draws. Gino, there are more than 15 committees that are allowed to report and they all have no time limit. He says, too many members go home and can't wait past all those delay tactics. He's right Gino, I saw lots of members leave after they were put to sleep by all those long reports by all appointed committee people. They can't wait till good of the union because it takes too long. So what happened to the motion kid? Well Gino, the Jeff Irons looked confused. Then he looked a little scared. He looked around and when he realized he had to make a chairman's decision he looked down as if he was embarrassed. His voice sounded not so loud and clear when he said, I'm not going to entertain the motion. So did he say no kid? Yes Gino, he said that there was an agenda published and that the only time it was amended was when they invited a politician to speak. The Perry Speranza wanted a point of order and the Jeff Irons seemed angry when he asked him state his point of order clearly and not pontificate. He said that that it had been done before but the Jeff Irons said in a loud clear voice. Fine I'm still not going to allow it. I heard the Perry Speranza say. Sure it was okay to change the order of business when it suited the administration to have some politician friends brought in when they wanted a captive audience and waste time and stall the meeting so members wouldn't have time and good of the union to say what was on their minds about our union business. So he didn't allow the members to decide if they wanted to change the order of business kid. The Perry Speranza said that the Jeff Irons should have asked for a second in his nice loud voice and allowed the members to debate the question before letting the members at the meeting vote and decide if they wanted to support a motion to change the order of business. Why didn't he kid? I don't know Gino. 
The Paris Speranza said on the microphone that it has been done before and when the members heard the reasons to allow such a change they supported it and the order of business was changed. They went straight to the good of the Union Pargino, and members had plenty of time to have their say. Sounds like the Jeff Irons is just another dictator with a nice loud clear voice kid. I guess all that practice speaking as an appointed committee guy helped him at, kid. Too bad he won't let the members conduct business according to the rules. Hey kid. I agree Gino. The Jeff Irons has said that it's not 3, 5 me, it's 3, 5, 3. I guess it doesn't apply letting the members make decisions in meetings when he does not want to allow it. Now that he has been allowed to show his stuff as chairman he should change his motto to it's not 3, 5, 3 it's 3, 5, 3 according to me. That's a good one kid. Who writes your stuff? The same guy that is pushing your buttons Chino. Okay kid, come on over and keep watch while I go over there and tie that air hose around that guy with the jackhammer over there. You're a lover not fighter remember? That's right kid. Good to know you're paying attention when I talk to you. Yes, Gino. I always put down my tools, so I can pay attention when you talk. At breaks. At a boy. Gino. What, kid? Did you hear about the Barry Speranza finally beating the rap on those bullshit charges the Barry Stevens laid against him? I did, kid. I read it in the IBEW Electrical Worker publication. In the June 2012 Executive Council Minutes. It only took two years to find him innocent, but the Barry Stevens sure managed to prevent him from talking to us that night in April 2010 in what in my opinion was the worst example of an IBEW union meeting in history. They rammed in that 100% name hire clause without discussion after the Tony Chiapetta promised we would have an opportunity for a discussion and questions before the vote. Gino, did you hear about how the minutes from the trial board were missing the part with Tony Chiapetta's testimony? The Perry Speranza got him to admit that he told the low-rise members at the meeting that, I quote, The contractors ain't gonna give you shit. He shouldn't be doing that shit he Gino? Yeah, but the Perry Speranza made a tape recording of the trial board and then sent the omitted part to be included with the minutes the local union produced of the trial. Funny how the Tony Chiapetta was allowed to speak even though he was not a member that was working under the agreement, but the Paris Speranza was interrupted by the same guy that made that poor decision, ran a terrible meeting and then accused and charged him of causing a disturbance for calling out the incompetent officer. Technically the Paris Speranza was right about the Barry Stevens, wasn't he Gino? Apparently so kid. I have read on Facebook where the IBEW Vice President for Canada, the Phil Fleming, agreed with the local 353 trial board and he didn't see that the Paris Speranza was right in challenging the chair. Phil who? I wonder how a guy becomes an IBEW Vice President. Probably got appointed, kid. Yes, but Gino, wouldn't he need to understand about fundamental Robert's rules of order? I would think so, kid. How could he make such a decision when a member's right to speak was at stake? You got me, kid. Why don't you write him a letter and see how long it takes to get an answer? You're still young. You might get one before you retire. Very funny, Gino. But then how does the international president, the Edwin Hill, miss such an easy point and sustain such a bad decision by a local 3, 5, 3 trial board when a member's freedom to speak was at stake? Not sure, kid. But when you write your letter to Fleming, you should copy it to the Edwin Hill. Come on, Gino. They said on Facebook that the Edwin Hill is as old as the hills and that he was ready to retire after a few more years of selling out the IBEW journeyman wireman. Sure he's kid, but they were saying he was going to retire for a while now, but he is still going strong making poor decisions that disenfranchise members like the Perry Speranza. Hey, Gino. Do you think this will piss off the Edwin Hill? I sure hope so, kid. Then maybe he will get up the courage to answer his members when they ask him tough questions about why he won't stand up for the members' basic rights. Hey Gino, do you think the Edwin Hill will get on his computer and make an extra normal cartoon to tell us why everything he does seems to look like he is selling out the JW and all the rights and conditions that were fought for by those that came before us? Probably not, kid. He's too busy but he has lots of time riding his motorcycle and making videos for the Hour Power Show. 
Well, Gino, it has been great chatting with you in the park. I hope fellow IBEW members will pay attention to this cartoon a little more than a bunch of written words on Facebook. I bet they will, kid. I bet they will. Now let's get back to that clusterfuck they call a job site and show them how we can do our jobs and not get hurt despite all they throw at us.